Burrell, as I said, built in Thetford, and it's what's known as a general purpose of agricultural engine. The uh, traction engine in its simplest form would have been used by a threshing contractor to drive a drum like this, or wood sawing, um, baling, anything, uh, anything like that really for belt work. They weren't really built for road haulage as such. They tended to be bigger engines with um, more gears, springs and rubber tyres. You see this one's got the steel wheels that you would have had originally. Designed only really to drive from one farm to the next, towing the threshing tackle behind. And this is an interesting engine because it's a single crank compound. The simplest form of traction engine is a single cylinder. It uses the steam once and exhausts it up the chimney. Um, a more efficient way is to use the steam twice in a high pressure cylinder and then into a low pressure cylinder and then you have two connecting rods working on the crank that turns the flywheel. The Burrells came up with a unique solution whereby they had the two uh, cylinders are diagonally in the block working on one single crosshead so it made a slightly more efficient engine um, but with greater simplicity to suit the average traction engine driver of the day. And, and you ask me why we do it. Well, I'll tell you why we do it. Because in about 1973, the farm had a major fire. And my father's uncle was rather underinsured. And my father said, let's put a wheat stack up, because the wheat is then stored in a stack. Uh, but then, that, I was still at school then, um, but then what happened was in about 1980 I came back, my father's uncle was dead and all that sort of thing. But however, we continued to put a stack up because we didn't have a decent grain store. And then along came Guy Jolly on his moped <laughs> from Wissett. He said, I'll buy the straw off you for thatching. And, uh, it was almost like Bugs Bunny's dollar signs in his eyes, but no, not like that at all. He bought the straw, he thatched the house with it, and then we thought, blimey, there's a market here for the straw, and the market, you know, to us, almost, the wheat is almost a byproduct, although it is very important. It's the straw that we're after, and we try and grow a good thatching straw. And there's a thatcher here today, Graham, and he'll be using some of this straw. So that's a much taller, taller straw. Yes, yeah, an old variety, Victorian variety called Square His Master. Right. Um, it's got red chaff, and it can't, I mean, this particular year when this was, was grown, that didn't grow as tall, but it can grow really tall, you know, uh, up to four foot. But, um, you know, it's, and it's tough. You cut it with a binder when it's slightly green, uh, or shall we say almost fit, uh, and then mature it on the shock. So you, Oxford English, stook it in Suffolk, yep. shock it and then cart it, stack it, and then eventually thrash it, and job done. Excellent. So yeah, the reason we thrash, you put this, this wheat through a thrashing drum these days is to get the thatching straw. And I work as a thatcher, and you cannot beat drum thrash Straw, because the way it's fed into the drum is quite critical and it's all fed in the same way so in theory out the other end you get very uniform unbroken straw and then it goes through the machine at the other end which is called a buncher or a low density baler and that just gently gathers the straw and then I have to then have to prepare it to go on the roof, which is quite a long process, which very basically is you have to shape all the straw up into a bed and you have to wet it and then you have to pull it out into gab what we call gabbles. So you gabble the straw up and it's not until all that process is done, which is all done on the ground, is it, is it ready to go on the roof. So there's over half the work of thatching the roof is done on the, on the ground, not on the actual roof. And then it's um, quite a long process putting it on the roof, of course. Very labour intensive. No wonder it's so expensive these days. <laughs> yeah, and I don't charge enough either. <laughs> Thank you. 
So, can you tell us a little bit about the history of this engine? Yes, so it's a uh, Burrell traction engine, so it's built in Thetford, proper Norfolk engine. But uh, this engine worked in Surrey and in Sussex. It worked for the Brookham, and then it ended up with Lugs, who were a, a, a steam firm that used to come from Billingshurst in West Sussex. And they're still involved with steam engines now, still repairing them and working with them. Uh, this one, it was damaged, so they say, in an air raid in the Second World War. And it wasn't used anymore after that, it was parked up in the uh, yard out of use for many, many years. And a chap called John Bush bought the engine with a view to restoring it. Unfortunately, Bush had died before the engine was finished, so uh, Michael Lug, the aforementioned Lug family, he restored the engine and uh, then went to Canterbury for sale. And it was for sale down there for a couple of years and it was then bought by the Eason family from Norwich and they brought it here today to do this little job. about 17 and a half because I could just drive on L coach. We had a stack of beans in the stackyard which luckily didn't catch fire. Um, and I remember them being flashed subsequently after that. And uh, yeah. Mm. So that and this thrashing machine belongs to Edgar Driver. And Edgar had that when he was 17, a uh, brand new. Yeah. And and that's not done it's not had a year's rest. It's worked every year of its really? life, this drum, yeah. So how old's that now, then? Uh, the drum is 1951. It's one of the later ones France made. And you can tell by the plate that's on the back of the drum there uh, with the serial number, and there's a 6-1, and you take 10 off the 6-1, and you achieve the year of right. the manufacture. And so you can look at any Ransom's drum, look at those two figures. I can't remember if they're the beginning or the end, but you take 10 off and that's the year of manufacture. Mm. Uh, but, you know, you should talk to Edgar. I mean, he was a uh, man, he had it when he was 17, he's 85 or 86 this year, so uh, whatever age he is, work it out. And uh, yeah. And in fact, the chap here today, Norman, where's Norman? He's over there somewhere. He'll tell you that, you know, he, he thinks that should be written about, the fact that this drum has never had a rest. It's always worked every year of its life. That is remarkable, isn't it? Yeah. Not many people using these anymore. No. Uh, how much can that do in a day weight, then? Or how much do you average? Well, we don't sort of go at it as hard as they used two years ago, do we? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I suppose... You're talking about a stack of, say, four to five acres in a day. Right. Whereas it goes a modern combine. Yeah. Like, I mean, you can do four or five acres in about two or three hours. You know, yeah, or, yeah. Uh, or even less than that, actually, probably an hour. Yeah. Nowadays, with, with the modern 30 foot combine. But, um, yeah. how, how, how do you harvest the straw? Well, with the pitchfork, you know, we shock it up, as I said, and we cart it. How's it cut? Sorry. How's it cut? Yeah. With, a, with a binder. Right, what they call okay. a self binder. Yeah. So um, they they were invented way back in, in the 1800s. I've got a good book about that, actually. Right. Yeah. Uh, and Mr. <laughs> Hewitt, I've forgotten his name, who invented the knotter. So what come first, a string or a knotter? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you invent a knotter, but you've got to have the string manufactured yeah. to put in your knotter. Uh, but before that, they had sail reapers, and before that, they had scythes. You see, so you had a gang yeah. of, of men with scythes, probably ten in a gang, mowing across the field. And actually, a gang of ten men could do the same in a day as a, as a binder could with two men. Um, they used to ma I reckon a man could uh, mow and shock up an acre a day. That's impressive, isn't it? Uh, whereas with a binder, with horses, say, you'd have two men who'd cut it much quicker, but then they'd have to shock it up. So, uh, but you know, you lost, and you can see why, 
when Binders first came out, they were shoving. In fact, when Reapers first came out, they were shoving iron bars in the crop. Yeah. You know, taking uh, jobs. Taking jobs. The Luddites. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah.